Vic's Matinee Theater, starring Victor Jory. Vicks, the makers of Vicks Vapor Rub, Vicks Vatronol, Vicks Cough Drops, and Vicks Inhaler, present the Matinee Theater, starring Victor Jory in the Scarlet Pimpernel. First, here's a good thing to remember when you catch a cold. The best-known home remedy for relieving miseries of colds is Vicks Vapor Rub. The Scarlet Pimpernel is one of the most dashing figures of legend. He was a man of a hundred disguises who lived in almost continual masquerade. He had one great aim in life, to rescue the persecuted in France from the guillotine of the French Revolution. In England, only the few members of his own band knew that that great fool, that fop, that overdressed wealthy dandy, Sir Percy Blakeney, was the fabulous Pimpernel. Our story starts in England on Sir Percy's wedding day, the day when he claimed the great French beauty, Marguerite Saint-Just, as his bride. Good luck and good fortune. Yes. Much happiness to you both. Good luck, good fortune, happiness. Oh, what lovely things to wish. Are you happy? Very, very happy. I started to think how drab my life would have remained had you not walked into the Comédie Française that night. I asked you to marry me that first night. I meant to. But I asked you so many times, I've quite forgotten. Oh, no, no, you asked me the second night. The first night you said, you are the greatest actress in the world and the most beautiful, and I love you. But you did not speak of marriage. But the second night and the third and every night thereafter. Oh, you must have known all along I would marry you. I was too much in love to hide it. Ah, oh, you're so Beautiful, Marguerite. You know, my darling, you are quite a puzzle to me. Yes? How do you mean? Sometimes you seem to me like two different men. When we are in public, you act so so differently than when we are alone. (laughs) Most husbands do. Which way do you prefer me? As you are now. Oh, Percy, this estate of yours is so beautiful. It reminds me of some of the old places in France before the populace destroyed them. Careful. It was public knowledge that your sympathies were with that populace, Marguerite. No, no. My sympathies were with the revolutionary ideals, yes. I believe in liberty and equality and fraternity. But my sympathies are not with those who murder. Yes? Big pardon, Sir Percy, but Sir Andrew Fuchs is in the library. He regrets to disturb you, but he says it is of the utmost importance that he speak with you a moment. Very well, Bentley. Will you excuse me, my dear? Oh, Percy... Please, do not be long. I'll try not to be. Andrew, what you're saying is incredible. I know how you feel, but for your own sake, you must not dismiss it too lightly. What I have told you is true. Your wife was responsible for sending the Marquis de Saint-Cyr and all his family to the guillotine. There are a hundred people to testify the fact that she gave their names to the tribunal. I know you would not bring me the story if you were not positive as truth. And yet... I cannot believe my instincts would play me so false. And I will believe in her unless she tells me herself that this is true. There is something else. We have just received word that the Comtesse de Tournay and her two children have been sentenced to die on Thursday. Thursday. My old friends, Thursday. We must be ready to leave for Dover within the hour. But first, I must have a word with my wife. No, all I want to know, Marguerite, is did you send the Marquis and his family to the guillotine? Yes, Percy, I did. But let me explain. There can be no explanation for such a deed. I'm afraid I shall have to leave you for a time. I have an errand that will take me away for a week or so, and so, good day, milady. Percy, where are you going? That, madam, is my secret. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Monsieur Bebo, have you caught the Pimpernel yet? No, but I will, old woman. I am the shrewdest gatekeeper in all Paris. If I had been on the north gate of Paris last week instead of this one, 
If Pete Burnell would be in jail right now. <laughs> oh, would he now? That fool Gropier was at the North Gate last Monday. When along comes a market cart laden with casks and driven by an old man with a boy beside him. Gropier looked in a few of the casks and let the cart go through. Of course, of course. Pimpernel was the driver. Any fool should have known that. Not half an hour later, up comes the captain of the guard with a squad of some dozen soldiers with him. Has a cart gone through, he asks. Yes, says Gropier, not half an hour ago. You let them escape, shouts the captain. You will go to the guillotine for this. Hidden in that cart were the Duc de Chally and all his family. And the driver was none other than that cursed Englishman, the Scarlet Pimpernel. <laughs> oh, what a fool. Fool. But you have not heard all of it. The captain rushes through the gate, followed by his dozen soldiers. <laughs> and of course it was too late. Oh, the fools. They should have examined the casks properly. No, old woman. Those aristocrats weren't in the cart. The driver was not the Scarlet Pimpernel. In fact, there was nothing wrong with the people in the cart. No, oh, no. But the captain of the guard was the Pimpernel. And every one of his soldiers were the aristocrats we were looking for. <laughs> one thing I will tell you. The Scarlet Pimpernel will never pass through my gate. You're a smart man, Bebo. A smart, smart man. You're right, old woman. Say, what have you got there behind you in that covered cart? My grandson... He's sleeping back there. Take a look, if you like. He has the smallpox. The smallpox? Curse you, you old fool. You want to infect all of us? Take your cut and get it out of here. Get it out of here. All right, all right, citizen Bebo. May the devil take your soul. <laughs> seen a cart. I have seen a hundred cards, Captain. Oh, Citizen Chauvelin, my gate is greatly honored by your presence. Have you permitted the cart to pass, driven by an old hag who said her son had the plague? Yes, a horrible old woman. Oh, you stupid fool, you idiot. That cart contained the Comtesse de Tournay and her two children, all of them traitors and condemned to death. And the driver, your so-called old woman, was the Scarlet Pimpernel himself. Percy, my dear, I am so glad you are home. I have been so worried. Such a show of enthusiasm, my dear, is quite uncalled for. I've only been gone a week or two. You have been gone almost three? Well, well, has it really been that long? Tell me about your trip. Was it pleasant? Was it difficult? Where did you go? My dear, I can't quite see that that's any of your business. I see. Is that the way it is going to be, Percy? Yes, my dear. That's exactly the way it's going to be. Now, you better go and get some finery on. We're attending a concert tonight and a ball afterwards. Both of them will be complete bores. Uh, but, of course, one must be seen at the right places. I think I almost hate you. And one of these days you'll have no doubt of it. Hurry, please. I do despise being late. You'll excuse me if I leave you alone in the box for a moment, Marguerite. This concert is beastly dull. I'll be back before it's over and escort you to the ball. Yes, of course, Percy. Well, you did not stay long, Percy. May I take your husband's chair a moment, Lady Marguerite? Chauvelin. What are you doing in England? Why have you left Paris? I am here as a representative of the new government, and I am also here to seek an enemy of France. I must speak quickly. Your husband may return. I want you to help me to find this Scarlet Pimpernel. The Pimpernel? But I know nothing of the Pimpernel. And if I did, I would not tell you. Lady Marguerite, I have in my possession a letter that definitely proves that your brother, Armand Saint-Just... Is a member of the Scarlet Pimpernel's no. band. He is in France now. One word from me, and he dies on the guillotine. I am willing to trade his life for the Pimpernel's. My brother is a member of the Pimpernel's band? Yes, yes. So I think you will do as I ask. 
I give you my word that as soon as I know the identity of the Scarlet Pimpernel, you shall have the incriminating letters. You see, we captured certain papers and we learned from them that he's to leave for France tomorrow, that he's to be at the ball tonight, and also that Sir Andrew Foulkes is a member of his band. Last week, he rescued the Countess de Tournay and her two children, but they had to leave Count Tournay behind, and he has sworn to rescue him. That's why the Pimpernel is going to France tomorrow, so he must talk to Sir Andrew tonight. If you keep your wits about you and watch Sir Andrew closely, you may save your brother's life. Well, what do you say? My brother is very dear to me. You leave me no choice. Your mind is not in your dancing tonight, my dear. Perhaps you're bored. Percy, I feel a little faint. Would you get me some water? I will sit in the reception room a moment. Of course, my dear. Why, Sir Andrew! <laughs> What are you doing alone in the reception room? Surely you do not lack for a partner. Uh, no, no, I, I, was, uh, I was just a little bit tired. Oh, how deceiving you are. You stole in here to read a love note. Mm -hmm. See, there it is on the floor. Uh, you mm. dropped it as I came in. <laughs> I have it now. Now, what does this small scrap of paper say? I must ask you to return that piece of paper, Lady Marguerite. It was something I wished destroyed. Oh, well then, we will destroy it. Here, I will hold it to the flame for you. Oh. There. Do you feel better now, Sir Andrew? Oh, immeasurably. And so do I. So, perhaps you will invite me to dance. Oh, with pleasure. Part of the paper was destroyed, Chauvelin. But when I held it to the candle flame, I read the words, Start myself tomorrow. And also... If you wish to speak to me again, I shall be in the supper room at one o'clock precisely. And it was signed with the crest of the Scarlet Pimpernel. Mm -hmm. You've done well. It is almost one. I will go to the supper room at once. Oh, there you are, my dear. Percy, I have been looking everywhere for you. I am so weary, I would like to go home. I'm sorry, my dear, I fell asleep in the supper room. Asleep? In the supper room? Was anyone else there? No one but that Frenchman, uh, Chauvelin. He was asleep, too. I got so deucedly tired dancing, that was the only quiet place I could find. Well? Well, why are you staring at me like that? You're looking at me as though you'd never seen me before. In just a moment, we will bring you Act Two of The Scarlet Pimpernel, starring Victor Jory from the stage of Vic's Matinee Theater. These days, when children catch cold, most mothers believe in quick action. And the modern way they use to relieve distress of children's colds is to rub on Vic's Vapor Rub. You see, the moment you rub on Vapor Rub, its famous relief-giving action starts right to work. It helps relieve congestion and irritation in the upper breathing passages, the coughing spasm, sore throat, and that muscular soreness or tightness. You see, Vapor Rub is so good because it penetrates, penetrates into the cold, congested upper bronchial tubes with its special soothing medicinal vapors, and at the same time, it stimulates, stimulates chest and back surfaces like a comforting warming poultice. And most important of all, this penetrating, stimulating action of vapor rub keeps on working for hours to bring welcome relief. So, Mother, do this without delay when your child comes down with a cold. Use the modern way most mothers use. Rub on vapor rub, for only vapor rub gives you this special penetrating, stimulating action. Remember, it's the best known home remedy for relieving miseries of colds. Vicks Vapor Rub. <laughs> And now the second act of The Scarlet Pimpernel, starring Victor Jory. As the curtain rises, Marguerite and Percy have just arrived home. As they walk through the gardens toward the house, Marguerite hesitates, then turns to her husband. Percy? Yes, my dear? Please, 
Do not go in for a moment. There is something I... I would like to talk to you about. Yeah? What is it? It is... It is very hard to tell you. It is very hard to tell you anything, Percy. You are so far away from me. What did you wish to say to me, Marguerite? It is Armand, my brother. He is in great danger. Monsieur Chauvelin told me that he was a member of the Scarlet Pimpernel's band. And Chauvelin said that if I did not help him find the Pimpernel, Armand would be executed in France. Armand will be taken care of. So do not worry. Do not concern yourself any further. Do you think you can do something about it, Percy? I think I can. Oh, you are looking at me as though you despised... Perhaps I do. Then why did you marry me? Because I thought... I thought I was marrying a vastly different woman. I thought I was marrying a woman of spirit and courage and honor. And instead I found I'd married a woman who was responsible for the death of a family I had known and loved. You can hardly expect me to care much for you, my dear, after that. Percy, even up to the very morning Sancia went to prison, I tried desperately to save him. I would have told you the whole thing was a horrible, incredible accident if you would have listened. Many people have told me that you always despised the Marquis and made no secret of it. Yes, I despised him, but I would not kill him. Do you know what he did? He had Armand, my brother, thrashed by his lackeys. And do you know why? Because Armand was not of the aristocracy and had dared to love his daughter. Percy, he was not a good man. He plotted with Austria against his own country. When that knowledge came to me, I took it to headquarters. I thought it was my duty to France. I still think it was. But I did not know his enemies would use that as an excuse to assassinate him and his whole family. It's a very pretty story, but you can hardly expect me to believe it. No. No, I do not expect you to believe it. You have made up your mind to believe the worst of me, and you will. Well, I guess that doesn't matter very much anymore. You can only be hurt so much, Percy. After a while, pain stops having any meaning. It's a great pity, madame, that you don't know the identity of the Pimpernel. I can assure you you can sell the information far more dearly than the price that has been offered you. But, Percy, I do know the identity of the Scarlet Pimpernel. I learned it tonight. And I did not sell the information even for my brother's life. And do you know why, my dear? Because I love you. No matter what you think of me. Good night, Percy. Good night, Marguerite. Lady Marguerite. Lady oh. Marguerite. Yes, Bedley. What time is it? Good morning, milady. And a package just came for you. A package? From whom? It's from Monsieur Chauvelin. Uh, the messenger said to tell you that it was in payment for services rendered that your information last night had at last unmasked the man he was seeking. Bentley, where is Lord Percy? Well, he's not here, madam. He left for France before dawn. Order me a carriage at once, Bentley. Tell the men to hurry, hurry. Yes, madam. And Bentley, you must tell me where to find him. Unless I reach him, Chauvelin will capture him the moment he sets foot in France. I don't know if I dare tell you, madam. I've had explicit orders not to. Bentley, you must believe me. I betrayed him without meaning to. If I can find him and tell him what happened, it may mean his life. But don't you see? He thinks he is still safe as Lord Percy. Very well, madam. There's an inn in Calais, the inn of the Red Feather. That is one of his headquarters. I'll take you there. Oh, I pray Chauvelin does not get there first. I pray he does not get there first. Well, Citizen Chauvelin, welcome to the inn of the Red Feather. Thank you, Citizen Brogar. Please bring me some dinner at once. I've heard much about your food here. At once, it is in Chauvelin. The guy, you sure you found a hut? I saw the hut with my own eyes. I saw the Comte de and in Armand saying, just go in. They are there now, waiting for the Pimpernel. And are my orders carried out? The roads and the beach are patrolled? They have not a loophole for which even the most cunning of men could escape. And all our men have been notified to watch by men over six feet tall. He could only disguise his height by stooping. He should be here at nine, so be back with your men. I trust he will not recognize me in these priest's robes that I have borrowed. Degas, my friend, this is the end of this Scarlet Pimpernel. Broca! Broca! 
Good evening, citizen. Good evening. Good evening, Sir Percy. I'm starving to death, Rogar. Bring me some food quickly. Quickly. We me know. <laughs> I've never seen our fat host move so fast before. What? Odd. See? I vow I never thought of meeting you here. And uh, I didn't know that you were a priest, Monsieur Chauvelin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. Oh, boy, you're choking, aren't you? Here, let me clap you on the back. Oh, I'm sorry if I upset you while you're eating your soup. Oh, 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 here, let me clap you again. You're having a dreadful time with that soup. Very hot. Yes, I... You know, Chauvelin, I should have known you anywhere. Although the costume does change you a bit. You, you keep looking at your watch, sir. You must be in a hurry. Well, don't let me keep you. Well, <laughs> nine o'clock. Yes, yes, nine o'clock. <laughs> And you're consulting your watch again, aren't you? What's the matter? Don't you trust Rogar's clock? Oh, it must be a curse of the lady, Chauvelin. Nothing else could make a man watch the clock for uh -huh. Ah. Well, what do you say to that, Monsieur Chauvelin? Huh? Oh, uh, pardon, Monsieur. I I'm afraid I was not listening. You were saying... Oh, uh... nothing very much. Here, have a, a pinch of snuff, Monsieur Chauvelin. Well, thank you. Uh... There's nothing quite as satisfying as a good whiff of snuff. <laughs> Only that, my friend, was not snuff. That was pepper. Sorry to have to leave you now, but I have this <laughs> elsewhere. <laughs> you see him? Did you get him? Who? The pimpernel, that tall man, you stupid off. The one who just went through the door. You saw nothing, citizen Chauvelin. The moon is not up yet. It is dark. Well, no matter. We'll probably make for the hut now, and so will we. Go at once and find a car. Tell your men we're leaving immediately. Oui. Oh, clumsy fool that I am to be deceived by a trick like that. Ah. Good evening, Monsieur Chauvelin. Well, this is a surprise. Lady Marguerite Blakeney. Yes. I'm glad you came. You may be very helpful, Lady Marguerite. Not to you, Monsieur Chauvelin. I have found the peddler's car, Citizen Chauvelin. And here is the peddler. Good, good. Can you take us to the hut of Père Blanchard? How much is there in it for you? Oh, well, ten gold pieces? Ten gold? Huh. I'm ready. Well, come at once. Come quickly. You will accompany us, madame? I will do no such thing. If you make it necessary for me to gag and carry you a child. Oh. We will go to Père Blanchard's hut at once. This hut is empty. They got... Ah, where are you men? Where are the Tournay and Saint-Just? Sergeant! Sergeant Giroux! The guy, you sure count the Tournay and Saint-Just were here this afternoon? Very sure. You want me, citizen? Sergeant Giroux, there were two men here. Where are they? They left about an hour ago, citizen. You let them go! Oh, but of course. Our orders were simply to watch and await further commands. We were told to stop no one but the tall Englishman. The men in here were two short men, two Frenchmen. They went down to the shore and got they into a boat. They went down to the shore and got into a boat, and you let them, you, you fool, well, you. You see, Monsieur Chauvelin, you can be outwitted even with your prize within your hands. The prisoners are gone and the Pimpernel is gone. But you, Lady Blackney, are here. And perhaps the Pimpernel will venture into France again for you. With all my heart, I pray that he won't. His life is worth a hundred of mine. Uh, if you would excuse me, please. Look, look what I found. A uh, piece of paper. Yes, you know it. Well, give it to me. Oh. oh, this was written by the Pimpernel. My dear de Tournay, it says, I cannot meet you as planned. There will, however, be a boat waiting on the beach for you at nine o'clock tonight. When you reach the ship, tell the men to bring the boat back to the Chagrin for me. I shall try to be there at 10.30, but if I am delayed, tell them to wait. Use the Pimpernel. Well, well, Lady Marguerite, perhaps I'm not lost after all. Shall I call the men, Citizen Chauvelin? Yes, yes, call the men at once. Sergeant, your men. At once, Citizen. Shall I drive you, sir? No, no, there will be no room in the car for anyone but ourselves and the soldiers. You and Lady Marguerite will stay here. Is it safe to leave them? Well, of course, of course they can't go far without the cart. And if they try, we shall have no difficulty picking them up. Au revoir, madame. Au revoir, peddler. Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> oh, Percy, Percy, what a wonderful feather you made. If I had not been so frightened, I would have laughed myself into hysterics. You mean you, you knew me all the time? Of course, I knew you the minute you entered the inn. You see, my darling, I am your wife. Well, then I may as well get the crook out of my back. Ah, there, it's good to stand up straight. Come on, there's a boat waiting for us on the shore, and when Chauvelin doesn't find me, he's liable to start looking back here for me. Come on. Say, while I think of it, uh, what are you doing here, anyhow? You were in danger. I wanted to help you if I could. Yes. I don't even know how to begin to ask you to forgive me. We both made mistakes. Look, the sun is coming up. Is it not beautiful, Percy? Yes. It's a new day for all the world, and especially for us. Now I can tell you how much I loved you, even when I wanted to hate you. And how much I will always love you. Oh, my darling. My darling. Come, we must start down the cliff. A Chauvelin will put an end to our day very quickly. Let us go then, Mr. Pimpernel. I'm afraid the Pimpernel has outlived his usefulness to France. Oh? There is no use trying to pretend I am sorry. I want you home and safe with me. Look, there's the boat. We're ready to shove off, Lord Blakeney. We're coming, sailor. I hope you mean it, and that there will be no more Pimpernel. There won't be, my dear. From now on, the Scarlet Pimpernel will no longer be the name of a man. It will be only the name of a small flower that blooms in the fields of England. A small flower but one that will always be a symbol of courage and of victory. Because of you, my darling. Uh Uh-huh. So speaks my wife. And so will speak the world. In just a moment, a word from Mr. George. If you have a cold, probably the one thing you want most right now is relief from the miserable distress of that cold. Well, if you'll take the advice of millions of folks from their own personal experience, you'll rub Vicks VapoRub on your throat, chest, and back at bedtime. And I'll tell you why. VapoRub's relief-giving action starts right to work and keeps on working for hours to bring you such welcome relief. It invites restful sleep. And often, by morning, most of the misery of the cold is gone. Remember, the best-known home remedy for relieving miseries of colds is time-tested, home-proved Vicks VapoRub. This is Victor Jory. Thank you for your many, many kind letters and suggestions. Now, here is something I especially want to find out. Many of my friends have asked me to present the Highwayman again. The Highwayman was, we are proud to say, one of our finest productions. Would you like to hear it again? Or just what plays or motion pictures would you like to hear? This is your theater, and we at all times want to comply with your request. Suppose we let you decide about next week's play. Write me care of Vic's Matinee Theater, Columbia Broadcasting, 22, New York. Victor Jury is currently co-starring with Miriam Hopkins in The Perfect Marriage. Our play today was adapted by Jean Holloway from Baroness Orxy's novel, The Scarlet Pimpernel and was directed by Richard Sandville. The role of Marguerite was played by Gertrude Warner. Music for our series is under the direction of Mark Warno. Be sure and listen again next week when Vic's Matinee Theater presents your request play starring Victor Jory. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.